I hear about sex. Some of the issues that young people are facing is peer pressure. I agree, peer pressure. Sometimes, like, if they don't want to go out, their friends force them, like, go through the window, or, come on, let's go to party. And how old are these young people going to these parties? 13, 14. Well, nowadays, you know, Jamaica is a very nice country, you know, can walk freely and stuff there, but no raping a guan and... A lot of things happen in the parties. Like, sometimes they get drunk, go home, don't know what's happening. The children cannot walk freely. They have to look around, see who's watching them and stuff. It's very uncomfortable for us, as, also as teenagers. Crime is one issue, and another issue is financial backings. Because many of us as students, we have the capability to do a lot of subjects and so forth, but where's the money? We don't have any money to back it. So we end up don't do any subjects and leave school and end up in poverty. Well, the greatest issue, as I see, is um, that a majority of our students at St. James High, they are without a father. And as a result, starting with the principal, being a male, I've declared myself as a father for all 2,000 plus students. True. And, yeah. And, and the other male teachers, um, they are to follow suit. Many of them, they have lost their parents and their fathers through violence, as Karen spoke about. And some are irresponsible fathers who are not there. Put your hands up if you've lost a father to a violent crime or you know somebody who's lost their father to violence or crime. Let's see, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, how many of you have irresponsible fathers? We can be honest. Put your hands up. Look, watch her, she, she's like, yes. You put your hand up with quite a urgency and confidence and, and, and you felt like I could see you wanted to say, yeah, I have a father who is irresponsible. Um, why is your father irresponsible and how does that affect you and your life? Well, for me personally, I don't know why is he responsible. It's because, but it doesn't really affect my life because my mother, she is a great father figure and she shows, she tells us that it doesn't matter if we don't have a father, she'll be there for us. And she is there for us through thick and thin and she ensure that everything that her father would give, she is there to give it. Give it up to UNICEF, National Bakery, Pure Water, and Island Grill, who are helping to, to um, shatter your silence and heal the nation's youth. So clap them once again, our sponsors. My, my opinion is that because, because everyone, everyone um, listens to their music and do what they say, like, do what they say, like, if, if they say, like, example, Come here, we grow on the so go boss a boy face. Uh, you, you, you probably just 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 go, go to one of your friends, a borrow a gun, and you just go around go around a corner, go shell down a boy or something like that. Who first penned the term "emancipate yourself from mental slavery"? Who? Who come one at a time? Hand up. Who? Your first national hero, the right excellent Marcus Mazzaia Garvey said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Bob Marley read it, heard it, and put it in song, and made it additionally popular. So congratulations. All right, so saving. If you save $50 a day for 365 days for the year, how much money do you think you'll have at the end of the year? Anybody? Whoever gets it right, the figure gets this. Real quick. Yes, ma'am. No? All right. Anybody? $50 a day for 365 days for the year. How much money will you have at the end of the year? You have the answer? Hold on. $18,250. Yes! Is that right? Yes. You're right. Can you imagine if you were saving that from you were very young? 
How much money you'd have to pay for your subjects now? Talking about you don't have money for subjects. Some mothers send their child out from a tender age to do certain stuff. And some ladies in here know what I'm talking about. And it is not right. The parents, especially the mothers, are abusing the child's right. They need to stop it because it is not helping them. Even when it helped them in a certain way, like to help them to go to school, some men help young ladies to go to school. How do they help them to go to school? The, the mothers send the child out to do certain things. Like what? Talk up the man, we are talk. Sexual activities. The mothers are sending. You Send know it. of that for a fact. Yes. Say Send you know of that for a fact. Yes, I know of that for a fact. Send say what you know for a fact. I want to hear you say it. Come in and believe it. Ladies, mothers are sending out their younger daughters to do sexual activities for money. And it is not right. A teacher up here, when I went to like start the class, I tell my mommy something. First, if you go, <laughs> why you don't want to go to start the class anymore? I was like, nothing. She keep on drilling me so till I tell her that a teacher up here that I used to look to, he approached me in a certain way and told me that. First, he asked a question like, um, do you have a boyfriend? He's like, sir, why are you asking me that question? Then he asked me, have I ever had um, sexual activities before? And then he said, um, if I ever been with somebody as big as him, I was like, no, I, I'm not interested in that. So that same person, I heard that he got one of my friends up here pregnant. First of all, let me ask you to give her a round of applause. And this is what we want. Now the OCR, which is a statutory body set up by the government, to hear grosses such as that, what we have in a child, talking about being sexually, being preyed on by a prescribed individual, and when we talk about prescribed individual, we're talking about teachers, doctors, nurse, police, soldier. And I want to applaud there because guess what? Last year, June, I got eight reports from one particular high school in Jamaica. We're talking about the dean of discipline who impregnated a fourth farmer. I wrote to that school, the administration wanting to go there to do an intervention and tomorrow morning, at 9 o'clock, I'll be going to speak to the staff. And at the back of there, I have some reporting forms which I leave with Mr. Johnson, the guidance counselor, and also there are some brochures. Because what we want, this is an avenue that children must have a voice that the persons who are set above them to protect them must do so and not prey on them. And so the Office of the Children's Registry is here to ensure that all reports that are made to us are confidential. And I'll say to you, with all due respect to, to Sir Principal, that if you have such information, you don't need to go to the school, but to call one triple eight protect the authority set up directly for you. We're open Monday to Fridays from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. We do even accept, please call me. So if you want to write down the cell number there and you send a please call me, we take the please call me and we call you back. So that's an avenue, and we're happy to be here with you. We love to hear children speak out. Sometimes as adults, we really don't accept these things to say they're true. But in fact, it could be true. So we want to say congratulations. There's no need for any further discussion here. I will talk to you afterwards, and then we'll take it from there along with the school administration. Thanks. So let's go around the panel now and just quickly go through and tell us quickly some of the solutions to the problems that, 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 that were raised. About bad parenting. Um, for parents, they should not send their children to, to, to go to other men's house to have, for them to abuse them sexually uh, and come back with money for the parents. They must go and look work. To hold your head up high, keep your self-confidence good, and don't let nobody dry your own on car and I show you no banana. If you want your life to be better, just listen to your parents because they are responsible for you and they know what is good and they know 
what is good for you in the future. But wait, I am coming to that. But you know, say so have bad parents too, and them too need some lecturing too. Yes. So if you know the right, you can lecture them too and make them know what you are going through. Youth should develop a more should develop more communication with their parents. Sometimes when there's a breakdown in communication with their parents, um, youths tend to do a lot of wrong things and develop a lot of issues that we're talking about now. So youths need to develop more. And another thing, another thing again, the parents, many of the times they have issues with the teenagers because they don't realize that teenagers go through a process called a generation gap where there's a difference in issues like for example parents don't want you to come home early um, come home too late and you want to stay out late parents don't understand that there's a psychological change that takes place at that time so i think parents need to be educated where that concerns what savings tip can you give to young people to help them in their education what advice can you give them to give their parents to help them to achieve their educational goals financially well, financially, the first thing is definitely to start planning early. As a, as, as a parent, they know that their child will be at high school and wish to further their education at university. So they definitely have to start planning and saving towards that goal of financing their education from early and doing some, some form of budgeting as well. So you have to budget for your, your child's expenses. So you have to put them first. Also, he made an interesting point about financial institutions. When you save your money, saving your money under the mattress, are in the piggy bank it doesn't necessarily work out for you you should try to find a financial institution to put your savings so once it has accumulated to say a thousand dollars or a 500 every month you can deposit something and that can be a fixed saving account which will be geared towards your education so that will be gaining interest over time and over the years so when that time comes when you need to attend a university or a tertiary education that savings amount is there